In this video, we finish off the hybrid desk. What up, many people? Last week, we finished the main construction of the desk. And now this week, we're going to add some features that will improve the quality of life and also make it look a little nicer. The next step was to remove all the hardware of the door and get it out of the way. I then screwed the top down to those scrap blocks I glued into the apron last week and spray painted the underside. This step isn't necessary, but it helped to give me a visual representation of where the table was supposed to go when I was ready to attach it finally. It also helped me line up where I wanted to put my surface mounted garbage can, which I can also spray paint to capture the outline of the lid. After this, I took a square and traced a rectangle on the inside of the opening of the garbage can, and with my circular saw, did a freehand plunge cut into the door to cut the opening. This cut was tricky. Be careful doing it, not only because it's dangerous, but also because it's almost impossible to get a straight line. I should have used a guide here, but I didn't. Don't be stupid like me. You may ask, why didn't you just drill some holes in the corner of the box and cut it out with a jigsaw? Well, one, I absolutely hate my jigsaw. And number two, I wanted to keep the cutout to act like a lid to the garbage can. When I wasn't using or in need of the garbage can, I could put the lid on top of it and use it as a desk surface. But when I needed it, I could take the lid off. Unfortunately, due to my garbage freehand circular saw skills, I ended up just drilling a hole anyways with a spade bit and finishing the cuts with my stupid jigsaw. Fast forward a bit and now I've created these little T-joint pieces out of wood that simply hold the garbage can to the underside of the table. Just measure the height of the lip of your garbage can for reference on how to design these. I then screwed these to the table and also added a little stop in the back. The garbage can now slides in and out of these slots and is held nicely to the underside of the desk. Word of warning, you know how I sprayed the inside perimeter of where my table was supposed to be to give me some idea of where I could place my garbage can lid? Well, I didn't really take into consideration the thickness of the apron, which is about a little over an inch and a quarter. And so when I placed the garbage can, I placed it so that it would interfere with where I had screwed the table to the rest of the support later on. So this isn't a deal breaker. All I had to do was just scoot the table surface over a little bit so it could fit the garbage can and also be screwed to the support. But word of the wise, if you were to do this, take into consideration the thickness of the apron when you're placing your surface mounted garbage can. After this, it was surface prep time and I sanded until my body was filled with the wood fibers of all the world. I tried to sand all the finish off the table and then the rest of the wood as well. Now the magic happens. 
I created a large stencil of my new logo with a website, which is linked below in the description, and taped and masked it down with the rest of the table and spray painted it red. I also did the same for the word MINIAC. I thought since I would use this desk as part of my future set, see, set, it should look the part. Unfortunately, both of my masks were bad in terms of accuracy and also durability, so I had to fix them up with some good old Mephiston red. It was surprisingly close to the red that I had picked out. After this, I was ready to move it into the space where it would live to finish the rest of the build, but there was something in the way that I had to remove beforehand. Yes, I demolished my old board game table and it hurt to do it a lot. It took a lot of work to make that table, but it was in the way and taking up too much space. And also it was just kind of a rickety table. It wasn't very sturdy. So I'll be making another one in the future that acts as a coffee table, which is what we already have in the basement. So we can consolidate what is taking up a footprint in the basement. After that was done, I painted the wall where I would be placing my desk to make it even prettier. See? It's even prettier now, it's gray, instead of weird cream color. I then moved my desk into place and started adding some polyurethane matte varnish to it. I added three coats and let each dry for around 14 hours or more and did a light sanding with 320 grit sandpaper in between each coat. The fun don't stop there, I needed some speaker stands too. Using some of the table leg material and plywood for my board game table, I cut the length to 3x3s and cut a dado slot in them, similar to how we did it in the aprons in part 1 of this video series, so that it would sock it into the table. I took careful measurements to make sure these would be over my monitors, but also not too high. I then also cut the platforms for the speakers themselves out of plywood. After test fitting them in my desk and making sure they were at the right height, I gave them some Miniac flavor and my desk was finally complete. This was a large project and I'm glad I was able to finish it. I love my desk setup. You'll be seeing more desk videos in the future with upgrades that I've planned. It isn't without its problems, however, which we'll get into now. I had a plan to wall mount the current lights that I use now to get them higher up in the air. They don't need to be so close to me and they can still provide light from higher up. But the width of the desk is so large that if I were to mount them on the wall, they wouldn't get close enough to me. So that's something to consider when you're choosing the width of your desk surface. The apron in the front, the 2x4, is still a little too low. If I had to make this desk again, I'd probably make it a 2x2, two two, just so you have more knee room to really get in there all the way. The shelf on the bottom detracts from foot space. And while it is nice that it gets my computer off of the ground and not on uh, my desk, it should be as thin as humanly possible if you decide to make it. You could even like cut it in half and not have the shelf on the painting half of your desk, but on the computer half. So you have more legroom when you're really scooting in to try to do your miniature painting. 
But enough about desks and their issues. Let's look at a mini person's model for the week. I don't even need to look at the miniature that we're doing for this week's community highlight because I know who it is and what the miniature is. It's a miniature by a dear friend. His name is Red Piano or Kenny Hibberds. He painted a pig bust from Bed Comets and it looks phenomenal. The different kind of finish on the red jacket from the skin is a nice contrast. The blue of the shadows and the skin tones are very nice. That predominant mole that sticks out, the wonderful glass of the goggles. I don't even need to look at the thing. I'm not, there's nothing in my hands. I, I know exactly what it looks like because I've looked at it so many times and I know why it looks so good. It's a great miniature. Kenny Hibberts is a commission painter. If you want to check out his stuff, his website is in the description below. Go check him out, give him some love. Maybe hire him for a commission. Um, but yeah, thanks for checking out my video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe or die, but more importantly, don't forget to paint more minis.